and we'll go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bernie. That was awesome. You're welcome. Um, so now we have uh, Bayard from Blue Bottle Coffee. Specialist for Blue Bottle Coffee. Um, I perform a lot of tasks for the company. I, I split my job basically between internal and external communications. So internally, I'm, I'm the one handling uh, internal education documents, um, sort of like uh, workshops for people, any job description, anything like that. Uh, we'll focus on the external tonight, and that is kind of more aligned with um, any content on our website, um, any sort of press interactions that happen. Um, all the social media, and um, again, sort of like trying to generate a way to to have a, a cross-platform experience for people when they are, you know, converting folks who are just customers, uh, who are customers, and, and helping them understand, you know, in a way that is not just limited to our coffee, how our values translate over. So, um, my main goal is to just amplify our values. We have three main values that we, uh, after many years, sort of squeezed out of our CEO. Um, we wanted a mission statement, and instead he sort of came back with a, uh, a list of three words, and those are deliciousness, hospitality, and sustainability. Um, but before we get into that, there are some challenges kind of that I'm sure you can all imagine uh, between a, a retail setup, uh, where you're actually serving somebody coffee, um, and uh, trying to convey the experience of retail through an online sort of experience. Um, one thing about, about experiencing Blue Bottle Coffee online is that you do not, uh, you don't get a headache if you don't experience us online like before 2 p.m., which is one of the main things we have going for us uh, in a retail setting. Um, but some of the main challenges of conveying our values online, not just selling coffee, but kind of just um, doing things that we find to be pretty effortless in a cafe setting, um, doing those online can be a little harder, and there are a few main reasons for this, and these are the challenges here. Um, one thing for, for us is that it, it is just easier to leave a website than it is to leave a cafe. Um, if you're in a cafe, you're having an experience, maybe you're with a friend, maybe you're doing some work, um, you, and you have, you have a thing that you're working on, uh, a drink, um, a project, something like that, at a website, at our website specifically, you can go and you can leave, and um, I think our, our bounce rate, we recently had a redesign of our website, but our bounce, our bounce rate went significantly down, but still, you know, we aim for, for a two minute time period of people visiting our website. Um, so that's one thing. Number two, it's like, if you're at a cafe and you're, and you're doing work, um, imagine like a, the, the analogy I, I try to use is if there's a steady stream of cats doing funny things and uh, strange, you know, strange singer-songwriters and just various other um, bizarre things happening outside, that's what you're up against when you're, when you're trying to sell coffee online or when you're trying to create an experience online for people. Um, that doesn't always happen outside of a cafe. You don't just get distracted and walk out. It's very easy to do that online. Another thing is that it's harder to display hospitality online. That's one of the cornerstones of what we do. And um, you can't be as intuitive online, especially if you're operating a website, um, as, as you can be in a, uh, in a retail setting. For example, if a barista gives you a cup of coffee and you try the coffee and you make a strange face, they can easily say, oh, it looks like you're not crazy about that coffee. Why don't we try to remake it for you? Or why don't we try to offer you something else? And it's just sort of a, you know, a snap of a finger and it's, and it's all better. Online, it's very easy for somebody to get something, to have an experience, to say nothing about it, and to never visit you again. And you never know, and I always treat any sort of negative feedback uh, 
online via any social media account as um, a, you ought to treat it as if it's being magnified by 10 because I believe every t it's only going to be every 10th person who actually speaks up when they have a negative experience customer service wise online. So you have to really pay attention to those things. Finally, it's tougher to create and foster loyalty when you're online. That's been my experience. Um, again, when you're in a retail setting, and the reason I keep coming back to retail is because we started as a retail company. We started at farmer's markets back in 2002. Um, we had one location uh, in 2005, and we only began to expand sort of around 2008. That's when we, we really took off. Moved over to Oakland in 2010, New York in 2010 as well. Um, so we're always coming from a sort of retail-facing mindset. And when you're talking about an, an online experience at a coffee company, um, you don't have certain things on your side that you would when you're a retail company. For example, people tend to get up and um, you know, take a shower, get ready for work, and then on their way to work, they'll come by and they'll visit the Blue Bottle or, or they'll visit their favorite cafe. Um, when you're online, it's as though somebody wakes up, does their thing, and then they get onto a street where every single best cafe in the world is just lining them on either side. And they have the choice of you know, uh, what, what they want to experience in a way that you don't necessarily, to an, ex in, to an extent it's relieving, but um, online it's very hard to, to kind of keep people loyal when they have so many options and they can access those options so quickly. And also we have lines. Sorry, I'm sure you've seen them. <laughs> So what we found to be most useful when it comes to um, actually executing your values with your content is um, we first had to ask, we had to ask ourselves who we are. And I mentioned our three words before, deliciousness, hospitality, and sustainability. Um, one crucial thing is uh, we want to make sure that, that our product, every single product that we, that we get, whether it's a particular coffee from a particular uh, origin country, whether it's a piece of merchandise we're working on, whether it's a combination of products that we're selling for the holidays, we want to make sure that those things are reflections of all three values that we hold. And we do our best to ensure that in every way. So take, for example, a cup of coffee, just a regular cup of coffee you're served at a Blue Bottle Cafe. Um, we start by actually visiting the farms, creating relationships with the farmers, uh, and helping them monitor their quality control at the, at the farm level. Um, to ensure deliciousness. Once we get it to our roasting facility, we roast it um, in a way that we want to be sure brings out the most delicious aspects of it. Um, and then finally, we provide training to all of our baristas, extensive 30 hours of training at least to every barista to ensure that when they hand the drink to you, you're going to get um, a sort of a reflection of our, of our goals. Um, the hospitality element is pretty uh, straightforward. We want to hire good people. We want to Always be kind, create a hospitable environment. And finally, this is the sustainability element. You know, when you're done with that cup of coffee, we want to make sure that you're not just throwing it away, you're composting it. And also, this being San Francisco, that's kind of easy and great. I think they'll find you if you don't do that. Um, so that's kind of how we think about any product we put out there. And that goes for content, too. Um, and the final step is you just want to make sure you're executing that in a, in a really sort of consistent way and that every execution, every, every step of the execution process is coming from a place of wanting to transmit those values and those goals. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you just one uh, real quick case study in sort of how we implement these values in, um, in our online presence. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about uh, sort of our more mobile social media uh, strategy when we all sit down. But um, earlier this year, uh, or about one year ago, we had a round of investing in Blue Bottle, and one of those investors was Google Ventures, who are located both in San Francisco and down in, um, in Mountain View. And earlier this year, I think it was February, we, we actually went to Google Ventures, uh, myself and the team of our executive board, and um, we basically determined that our old website, which you're looking at now, was, uh, I want to say sucked, but let me try to... <laughs> uh, it was not... It was perhaps the, the most glaringly uh, non-reflective of our values thing that we had going on, period, end of story. And um, we decided that it was time to, to sort of try to incorporate our values in a more, um, in a clearer way. 
and in a more effective way, in a way that drove sales certainly more, but also in a way that kind of made you feel the, hospita uh, the hospitality that we hope um, people experience when they walk into a Blue retail space, when they walk into a cafe, when a barista um, maybe helps them learn a little bit about the coffee they're being served, or um, you know they meet up with a friend or something. So you're looking at our old website. Uh, this is actually a funny side note about this, is that we, uh, this is a screen capture I think from last holiday season around maybe November or December. Um, we, we debuted a line of uh, smaller lot tin coffees that we sell in those small things. You can see the, the top two there. Um, all iPhone 4 pictures. Thank you very much. And uh, we couldn't, our website was so janky at that point that we could not actually uh, customize the order in which the copies were appearing. So you can see Bella Donovan appears third, and that's B, decaf noir, D, and um, so you're wondering what what trickery did we employ to uh, have small lots happen above those? And it was we were actually we had to hit space and then small lots, and because it was a space, we were able to sort of prioritize those things up front. So that is just one small glimpse of how. Uh, Primitive, our, our previous website was. So at any rate, we, um, we went to Google Ventures and we worked with them for, for one week to sort of visualize what the new paradigm for our online experience was going to look like as far as our web store, the purchasing of coffee online goes. And what we came up with, the central theme that we came up with was like, how do we make it more like experiencing a Google coffee when you walk in? How do we make it friendlier? Uh, ignoring the fact that there's a line sometimes again, sorry, that's line. Um, how do we make it um, a warm space, an intuitive space, a space that attempts to answer your questions and does so in a friendly, sort of tongue-in-cheek, but generally just sort of a, a hospitable way. And what we came up with was a, you can see actually the, uh, the menu on the side there that was basically, again, no drop-downs, very non-intuitive, it would take you all over the place, some pages were dead, it was a mess. Um, what we came up with was uh, total redesign of our site. And this, you're looking at the same page. This page accomplishes the same thing that this guy did. It's the coffee homepage. But what's different about this page is that we replicated the cafe experience in a way such that the site itself is asking you the very question a barista hopefully asks you when you're looking to buy coffee and you're a little confused. And you know that you like something with maybe certain flavor characteristics, uh, chocolatey or fruity or something like that. Um, but you don't know where to start. So the website, like a barista, actually asks you how do you prepare your coffee at home. And it gives you a series of options. And when you click on one of these options, it will actually narrow things down for you and pull away several of the different other options so that um, you have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more space to sort of take in all the different coffees and comprehend them. Um, and it, it ended up being a, a big success. Our web store sales went up significantly. There are other parts of the website that we improved upon, but as far as functionality goes and as far as executing our values as a company and um, being retail facing in the way that we want to be retail facing, this was sort of the, um, the, the apex of sort of our efforts. Um, and so I encourage you to, to visit it and then let me know what you think. Um, we also have, you can see up top, we have a series of brewing guides, which were very helpful. And um, our other ones were hand-drawn. They were very cute, but they were impossible to read. They were like a small comic book that um, was shrunk, I'd say, 50% of its normal size. So now our brewing guides have large pictures. Um, they're very straightforward, very short, very clear, uh, very interactive. Um, this might be better for actually sitting down with, with Frank and the other folks to talk about, but I want to give you just a quick overview about um, our social media and how we, we try to transmit these same values across different social media. So um, I'm sure, as, as you all know, there are no hard and fast rules for what announcement ought to go where, what announcement ought to be you know, across platforms. But one thing that we found to be most effective when it comes to new products coming out or events that we're putting on or something like that, we tend to use Facebook for announcement. When I say we, I am the communications department at Blue Bottle, so I tend to use uh, Facebook for announcements. Um, there's, a, there's a good deal of interactivity with Facebook. I find that when it comes to actually carrying on conversations with people, also, I don't know about you guys, personally, when, when a company or a 
it takes a lot for me to, to follow a company on Facebook. I have to actually really care about that company. But when I see them blowing up my news feed, especially with promoted posts, but just in general, more than a couple times a day, it's a real turn off for me. So I try to make sure that if nothing else, you know, if there's like a lead graph in journalism, a lead paragraph, Facebook is the one sort of tackling those things. The most crucial news, that's what goes out. When people begin to have questions, they want to have a conversation about different things, um, I find that Twitter is most useful for that. I also will often make large announcements on Twitter. But I find that um, when people want to be more interactive with me and, and when I want to uh, shoot back a response or just share a funny article that I think is pertinent to, if not necessarily Blue Bottle uh, specifically, then to the world of coffee or to one of our partners like Cho Chocolate or something like that, it's very easy to just throw that out on Twitter. People really appreciate it. Often it's funny stuff. I think one of our most successful Twitter posts was uh, I found a picture of like a um, Salvador Dali based cappuccino where somebody had poured a part in it and then tipped it over so the clock was like drooping over the side of the <laughs> nuts. Also backtracking a little bit with Facebook, our two most, this was like a real crucial moral kind of feeling I had, but our two most popular Facebook posts to date are one of Usher at our Tribeca location snapping an iPhone photo of his mocha. And thank, that's number two, thank God, because number one was um, an equality sign we made out of coffee beans when the Proposition 8 movement came down. And that was, that was an ethical thing, and that was something that we thought about pretty hard, you know, when it comes to taking a side on a political issue when you're a company like that. And we kind of, we had to check ourselves, we had to look at our values, and aside from like the virality of that, that was definitely our most uh, popular Facebook post. We just felt like that's kind of what we're about as well, and so um, that's number one. Number two, I was biting my nails though. I was like, please keep Usher equality, <laughs> human rights. I mean, Usher's awesome, but like. Um, finally, we have a SoundCloud account, and SoundCloud is one of the most thrilling um, sort of accounts for me. My background is in journalism, and um, <clears throat> one thing that is really fascinating to me is re kind of digging deep with uh, with various coffee personalities. They're, in the specialty coffee world, there is such a diversity of, of people, of characters, of different experiences you can have. And SoundCloud has been a great venue for us to kick off the Blue Bottle podcast, which is a super fun thing that I, I try to do um, whenever we have, say, a producer or a, um, a producer in town from, say, a different country, El Salvador or something like that, or when we're about to launch a new product. and. There's an interesting story behind it. It's, um, it's something I use my, my journalistic sense for. I try to find the story, and if there's a story there, to, um, to bring it out on SoundCloud. And uh, it's, it's definitely, you don't just post SoundCloud and, and somebody clicks on it, and you know, it's not like a couple of yucks. It's like, there's an investment to, to listening to a podcast, certainly. Um, but if people really want to go deep, they find our SoundCloud uh, page to be really good for that. We have about 20, almost 23,000 Facebook fans. Um, we have uh, 21,000 on Twitter, and I think SoundCloud is very new. Um, I just started that a few months ago. I think we're getting close to five or 10,000 on that. Um, finally, Instagram is not on here, but I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, Instagram videos have become a favorite pastime of mine, um, especially if they involve dogs and peripherally blue bottle coffee. Those tend to be the ones that succeed the most. Um, but Instagram, for me, is kind of a way. Instagram, above all else, for me, is a, a tool to kind of add spice to other um, to other announcements that might be more well suited for Facebook or for um, for Twitter. Instagram is allows me to add a visual element to those things in a way that is engaging and maybe sometimes funny. Um, and additionally, Instagram is a great a great way to. Twitter has this functionality too, but it's, it's a little bit different because the pictures themselves don't show up immediately when you're looking at it. Instagram is a, you need sort of a provocation to, to get people to click on the, um, the Twitter photo. Instagram is a way for people when they're traveling on Blue Bottle Business, especially to producing countries like Kenya, El Salvador, Guatemala, our green coffee buyer actually right now is in Indonesia, to file these very brief but very beautiful, very sort of lush, engaging dispatches about um, what he's up to, uh, about what what coffee is like at the farm level, and just in general to enrich people's experience. So that is my. Did I get the money? Should I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys.
So yeah, we're all up. <laughs>